This is Anna Imagination with the Healing Garden. Welcome! Someone just found one of my dots. This is really, really exciting. All right. I know this is going to start happening, and it started happening. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? It started. So Anna's dots is the game. The game is amazing. So I have a lot of people in my circle, and they know my work. And then they'll be digging out something, and they'll go, holy fucking shit! And they'll call me up. Anna! Did you know? And they'll tell me something and I'll go, uh-huh, I know. You found one of my dots. And, and, and that's all I can say. You found one of my dots. Keep playing. So Anna's dots, Anna's dots is the connect the dots through my learning journey that I took to figure out all of the fucking shit that I learned to do the shit that I do. It has an order of operations. You can do this either with the order of operations or you can just completely wing it and go on your own. If you are wanting the order of operations and it's not easy, it is not easy. It is not easy. This is a 40 year pilgrimage. It's not easy. Now it took me 40 years, but I didn't have the order of operations and I was wandering in the wilderness of nothing. So of course it's gonna take me 40 years but I condensed it all into a game, an RPG, IRL, NPC game. I am the NPC, thank you. And I set people on quests and I just let them go. If you find a dot, well, I'll let you know. If somebody comes to me and says, oh my God, Anna, did you know? Then I will say, you found one of my dots. And what I do then is I go over to try to killing part four, which is the philosophy. And I have Anna's dots as part of the course. And then I go through and it's chronologically to the people finding it, not the order in which I did it. It's everybody. So everybody's playing the game. So if you think you found something and you make a connection between my work and something that's out there and you're like, holy fucking shit. And you write to me, you email me, you contact me, you comment. And if I see it, and I'm like, ah, there it is. Somebody found it. And I have a place where you can contact me. I actually have a group where I'm watching. So as people find clues and you tell me, then I'll be able to tell you, you found one of my dots. And once the dot is in place, then it, it literally just trails you down to the next one. And what you are doing is actually building a second walkthrough of the pilgrimage. So everyone can literally see how everyone is coming to the same clues. And you're going to find the same clues. You can't do this work and not find the same clues because Da Vinci found the clues and Ayn Rand found the clues and Douglas Adams found the clues and Shakespeare found the clues and Steven Spielberg found the clues. We all found the clues. You're playing the game now. Now you're playing the game. This, this is how the genius philosophers play our game because, you know, the tabletops got really boring. So this is how we play a game. And then we embed it in story and we incorporate and we, we literally hide our clues in our artwork. So if you're a movie producer, thank you, Stephen. Yeah, you release a bunch of movies with all of the clues. And if you're a book author, you write a bunch of books. Every single great book has one of the clues. Every single great book has what? That's why they're the great books is because they're playing this game and they're so advanced and everyone's like, whoa, what is going on here? And that's how they go on, carried over time. Literally, they surpass the test of time because they are containing this story. Now, everyone's got a piece of the story. Everyone's got a clue. So you have got to put your perspective in. You don't have to. But if you play the game, you're going to walk away with your own interpretation, which is the point. So you got to go look for the clues. So this clue on the dot is music theory. So excited for this one. Somebody was like, did you know that there's 12 notes in the scale? Uh-huh, uh-huh, I know, I know. That's why I call it Pythagorean psychology is because Pythagoras did the work in philosophy and psychology and also in music theory and mathematics that would go on to Plato, who then took his curriculum and embedded it into his school so that I could find it. So I'm three generations away from Pythagoras. It goes Pythagoras, Plato, me. Because I went right to Plato. I took his curriculum and followed it to the letter. So if Pythagoras had not done the work he had done, Plato would not have done what he did and I would not have found it. So this was, by calling it Pythagorean psychology, it was a huge 
tip of the hat and honoring the work that Pythagoras did in music theory and also in philosophy that would go on to inspire my master and work on my master so that I could learn. So um, it is, it, and then it, it, this is extraordinary. This is my favorite. I, I just mind blown. It was, I had never studied Da Vinci. I, I knew of him and I love his work, but I never really dug deep. I never went in with my analytical mind to psychoanalyze him. I never went in to reverse engineer Da Vinci. And I know that man has stuff. So I finally, it was back in January, I believe of this year, January, 2024. I decided, all right, I put it off long enough. I got to dig out Da Vinci and reverse engineer this man. I, 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 I made it, I, I did not make it far. So I started with the Vitruvian man because, well, it's the Vitruvian man. It's his most famous piece. So I pull up the Vitruvian man and I start, this is how it went. All right, Da Vinci, here we go. And I'm thinking I'm going to go through all of Da Vinci's work and I'm going to study this man. So I pull out of his work, I look at it and I went, Vitruvian man, let's do the research on Vitruvian man. It takes me over to Vitruvius. Vitruvius, holy shit, Vitruvius is the man who invented indoor plumbing for the Roman Empire. Now I knew they had indoor plumbing. I didn't know Vitruvius was the man who did it. He was the genius architect of Rome. And I went, dude, and he knew the Roman Empire. And I'm like, holy shit, he had, he had the 12 ethical code. He had what I have, he had the God code. So whoa, like Vitruvius, I wonder who his inspiration was. Pythagoras. You know, I've never actually sat down and looked at, I know the Pythagorean theorem, but who was Pythagoras? So I then set him aside and I went into Pythagoras and I saw the compass. He, and I went, oh my God, it's my compass. He's my compass. But he never finished it. He had the, he had started, he had started the philosopher's compass. And, and then he went out. I don't know if he passed away at that point or if he got distracted with music theory, but he had started putting together the, the uh, philosopher's compass. He started to put together the 369 method from Tesla. And I went, ah, oh, yeah, there it is. So when I saw my compass that had been started by Pythagoras, when I saw, uh, and I, uh, that's when I found out that he was the, no he was the person who did nomenclature for the word mathematics and for philosophy. I'm, I still have an issue with his linguistics. I'm like, dude, dude, you should have studied linguistics, Pythagoras. I know you, you did music theory instead. That is an awful big, holy shit ask. I got it. Thank you for giving us music theory. But dude, like dude. So he gave us music theory. He gave us, he did a huge contribution to mathematics. He gave us a huge contribution to, he is philosophy. Well, he's not, hmm, he reversed, okay. okay. So this is how an academic discipline gets invented. It's not invention, it's reading mother nature. You have to be, you have to know how to read mother nature. This is, this is really, this is the separation. This is when you know someone's the real fucking deal and when they're not. If they can read mother nature and literally translate an academic discipline out of mother nature, they know they're fucking shit. I have the formula to do that. It's highly advanced educational skills. So that's how I ended up with the power economics, lost comprehension, uh, Pythagorean psychology, the emotional transaction of human connection and human circuitry is because, oh, and the 12 ethics of perspective growth and evolution is because, so six academic disciplines. So because I knew how to reverse engineer mother nature, I was able to find six academic disciplines. I like to summarize all of those under human propagation and or vitology. That's a lot simpler. So I have these six academic disciplines that I found. Now, I do know that Pythagoras also did this. Pythagoras reverse engineered music theory and he reverse engineered philosophy. And so he started it. And then his work went on to Plato and either Plato finished it. I, I'm certain Plato finished it. Like Plato enhanced on it. And then he taught it to Socrates who did it. And then he taught it to Aristotle who took it to the next level. So Aristotle gave us ontology and, and metaphysics. So, so Aristotle is like, he did all the work of Plato and then he took it to the next level and he reverse engineered ontology and physics. And that's the last, Christ reverse engineered the 12 ethics. So, and then we lost all of that information, all of it. So I'm going, okay, after we lost all of that information, well, that's what's wrong with society is we have six of these crafts that we lost. And then people don't understand Aristotle because they don't understand ontology or metaphysics. In order to do that, you have to have the 12 ethics. You have to have the, the six academic disciplines that I reverse engineered. So once you know how to reverse engineer mother nature, and this is where we got physics because Sir Isaac Newton reverse engineered physics. That's why he's the father of physics is because he reverse engineered physics in the 1600s. He had it. Da Vinci reverse engineered invention. 
that's how he was able to create the inventions that he made. So there's like a genius community. There's genius. And then there's, there's the fucking super genius. And when you are part of the super genius club, I don't, I don't like that at all. No, no, no. The super genius. When you're part of the super genius, what let's call it the point of comprehension. When you get to the point of comprehension there, let's call it that. I like that a lot better. When you get to the point of comprehension, you can reverse academic disciplines. Here's, here's what people don't understand is the academic disciplines at this point become common sense because it's actually common sense is just logical deduction. It's logical deduction really fast. And the more you have, the more you know, the more you understand from the point of comprehension, the more you can logically calculate consequences to logically deduce things. So all of physics now becomes common sense. So I have physics as common sense now. I have all of mathematics as common sense in my brain. It's common sense to me. Um, I, I have chemistry. I have astronomy as common sense in my brain. That's common sense because it's a logical deduction based off of the catalysts. Because I have the catalysts, then it's fine. If you know the catalysts, every academic discipline has, has like a, a, a fistful of nuggets that if you have logic and if you have problem solving in math and then you combine those five nuggets, boom, you can just solve it, it's done. You don't need to memorize anything because you have common sense now. So you can see the entire field of study without having to put more than maybe 30. Oh, now I can put literally 30 minutes into it and I've got it. In fact, I just did it this morning. I, I just did all of law and justice. Yeah, there you go. This is an example. I just did law and justice this morning. I have one piece of truth that came in. It snapped literally an hour ago. And I went, oh, I understand all of law and justice and crime. Got it done. And, and it's all common sense now. I didn't have to sit down and study any law books. I now can logically see exactly the logical pyramid, the, the hierarchy of all of law, crime, justice. It makes sense. And because it becomes common sense. I'm actually in the process of after this, I'm going to go and write up a whole thing on, okay, this is the logical comprehension of law and order and justice and how the, the law system and legal systems work. Now all of that makes sense. And now I'm looking at what we're doing in society and I'm going, mother nature is mad at us. Mother nature is very mad at us. Why do you think the world is falling apart? She's pissed. So anyway, and that came at the third expan perspective expansion from the point of comprehension. That is where you learn. I'm like, wow, it's way over here. Law and justice is law. And, ju and I'll tell you why, because law and justice does not belong to us. Law and justice does not belong to us, which is why she's pissed. So I'm going to be going off and putting that course together of what mother nature has to say about that, because, well, it's now common sense for me because I was able to reverse engineer it. So that's what Pythagoras did is he reverse engineered the academic discipline. That's what Sir Isaac Newton did. He reverse engineered physics. That is what they did in the uh, Arabian Golden Age or the Muslim Golden Age in the 1100s, in the 800 to 1100 century, is they reverse engineered the academic discipline of math. And all you're doing is using logic, math, and physics to interpret, to use, okay, it's basically scientific method in reverse. That's what it is. It's scientific method in reverse, which follows the 12 ethical stages of growth. So... When you are playing Anna's dots, when you find one of Anna's dots, that is what you are finding. That's what you're locating. And the first one is music theory. The first one is absolutely music theory. Ironically, music theory is the thing that 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 was the one that knocked it over. And it's also the first ethic. It is music theory. So to take it all back and see that he created the circle of fifths. And then I realized, oh, and my journey did start with the circle of fifths. That's absolutely where it started. When I started to study music theory, and I couldn't understand it. I had to go off, study geometry. I studied logic and then boom, I got it. And I felt, I felt my brain change. Literally, it, was, it took seconds. I felt my brain change. And it was extraordinary. I know the precise moment. I know exactly what I was doing. It's one of the most dominant memories in my, in my head is when I went from, I was working on a logical proof. I could not understand music theory. I was not getting it. And then I reached this particular point and the Juilliard master that I had said, why aren't you, did you study logic? And I went, no, geometry. Let no man who has not studied geometry enter these walls, sorry. And so he handed me music or he took me over to math and I had to study logic and math. 
And I was going over, actually, this book right here is the one, Geometry and Trigonometry for Calculus. I didn't even make it this far. I got, I can tell you, because I actually have it still marked in here. See, see where this, this right here is where I left off. I made it to page 20. Yep, I got here to methods of proof. That's how far I got. I got this far into the book and I never finished it. I never finished it. I got to this part in logic. And as soon as I did this, I went, I understand. And I turned right back to music theory and suddenly I could understand all of music theory like that. And that's when I started composing operas. It's when I started, start, yes, please, thank you. Thank you so much. It's when I start composing operas. It's when I start composing musicals. It's when I could start improving music because I could see the mathematical frequency is literally right there. That's all the logic I needed right there to, to figure it out. And it, it was extraordinary. As soon as I figured out proofs, that's all she wrote. I was done. Like, boom. I felt the, the thing in my brain switch. And from that point on, I was able to just learn at such an insane rate. It was a, about a few months after that, that I got an IQ test, that I took an IQ test and it came back at 180, which is 20 points higher than Einstein. And I credit it to that particular calculation. Now it was music theory and it was also logic. It was also all the arts that I had studied prior to that. And then when I sat down and applied it to my philosophy studies, which I had already been absorbing because I had just read Sophie's Choice and I was reading the great books, that's when it clicked and I just went, oh, and it, it was a game changer. It was absolutely a game changer. And that's when I learned how to learn and I reverse engineered learning, which is what, which is what, um, which is what um, Plato teaches. Plato just gave me the tools. All he taught me was the tools. I, I maybe was with Plato for five minutes. He taught me just the seven rules. When he taught me the seven rules, game over. That's all you need are the seven rules. After the seven rules, you're done. You can just piece it all together. That's the genius formula. The genius formula is what I put on my, on my website and that will walk you through the seven rules. Once you have the rules, you can unlock that part of your brain. It's extraordinary. It's absolutely extraordinary. So it, it's, it, yeah, it really is extraordinary. And it's funny because I'm watching, like I've been watching education for a while and Japanese children have figured this out. Well, the parents of Japanese children have figured this out that if you want your child to be a genius, you need to have them in a music class. That's why most Asian children are absolutely saturated very heavily in, in uh, music theory. Now they're not doing the 12 ethics, which is, I'm just gonna leave that there. They need to do the 12 ethics with it. They're not, they're just following a different, there's, there's two patterns, there's two, there's two plateaus. There's the music and the academic disciplines and then there's the ethics. And you can do this and become smart, but you're not gonna get any power. You're actually going to end up with consumption where you're never satisfied, you're unhappy and you, it, it's, it's, it's not a healthy path to go. You cannot cheat mother nature. The other way, combining it with the ethics, allows you to access the power. It allows you to enjoy and savor and have happiness. So if you remove the ethics, you're not going to have happiness. Um, so a lot of people have figured this out and they're pursuing the academic path in the right order, but there, there's, there's a lot of suicide rates as a result. There's because you can't cheat the code. You cannot cheat the code. So we have honest dots. We have the game. Go through it if you want to. It's, it's literally just, I game, I gametized the pilgrimage. So very, very excited. I, I'm, I'm, I want to celebrate because this is the first time someone found one of my dots and I was waiting for this moment. I'm like, you found my dot. You found my dot. Someone found my dot. So, I, and, and there's going to be more and they're going to be, what about this? Yep, you found another dot. I'm going to go in here and write it up. So as you bring me my dots, I'm going to let you know if you found my dot and I'm going to put it in there. Now you might bring me something that I'm going to say, you know what? That is not one of my dots, but that is something. That's part of this. You're going to find dots that are your own dots. You're on your own learning journey. So our paths are going to cross. You're going to find my dots and you're going to find your dots. So that's, and I actually have a sheet. I'm going to do a form so that if you want to submit a dot, you can, you can like tell me what you found and, and throw it in there. And if you're right, it'll be added to the, to the dots. If you, if it's not right, it's your own dot. It's your own dot. So there you go. I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Go, go Easter egg hunting. I have Spoken. Thank you so much. And may the kindest of words always find you.